Hello, this is senior forward Amy Olson from the St. Cloud State women's hockey team. This is the Jeff Geeson Show on KVSC. Welcome to the Jeff Geeson Show. Scott Gross along with the head coach of the St. Cloud State women's hockey team, Mr. Jeff Geeson himself. And this past weekend, you guys took on the University of North Dakota, hung in there with them on Friday night. Take a look at the uh, the scoring. Michelle Carvinen got the opening goal 48 seconds into that opening period. You guys would come back on this goal by Julia Gilbert on the power play to tie the score at 1, 11 seconds into the second period. Taken away, but Gilbert now dances into the UND zone. Gilbert with a shot on them. She banks it home on the top shelf. Oh, what a shot by Julia Gilbert, and she ties up this game 10 seconds into the second period, and it's a power play goal. For Talk St. about Cross what State. that goal by Julia Gilbert did to tie things up in the second. What did that mean to you and the team at the time? Well, I thought we were playing pretty well. I mean, that goal, the first goal was a turnover, and then they get a break there. And we were playing very well up until that point and then stayed right with them and then uh, and uh, played well in the second. So it was just good, a little bit of a boost there to tie the, tie the game up. And then, uh, you know, I thought that gave us a little momentum and we kept going from there. You guys felt good. You would go into the second intermission after that goal by Julia Gilbert, all tied up 1-1. The assist would be handed out to Molly Maud and Sky Kelly. And then you guys would battle back and forth the first 15 minutes of that third period, scoreless, and then it would be Carvin in once again, getting the goal at the 14:35 mark. You guys would have some chances there deep late in that opportunity to uh, to tie it up. Couldn't get it done, but overall, you guys, six power play tries. You had 14 shots. They had six power plays, only six shots. So uh, overall, you guys played pretty well against one of the top teams in the nation. Yeah, I thought our penalty kill was excellent. Obviously, they were over on the on the night. We uh, we had the one power play goal. Um, and it's just, you know, kind of the way things have gone for us in some certain situations, just a bad break because it wasn't a very good goal that uh, gave them the win. It went off of our skate on a harmless two-on-one, and that's hockey, and that's that's the bounces you have to live with. Hearing uh, some people talk about uh, talking to you about the post game in the post game, you felt pretty good overall with the team. You just kind of mentioned that uh, you had a lot of good things that you guys could improve on, and you felt very good about where your team was sitting after that. Talk a little bit about what you told the team in the locker room after that defeat. Well, I think just you know, not you know, like I said, I thought we played very well and, and probably deserved a better fate. And then it's 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 about being consistent. We asked the players to be consistent. Now we have to be consistent as a team, and we needed to come out and play the same way we did on uh, Friday on Saturday. And obviously that didn't happen for us. Take a look at Saturday. It uh, another tight one early on in this one. Is that uh, again? There's Carvin, and again she got a goal right away in that one at the 1959 mark in the first one nothing there. Then you guys uh, would go in the locker room. You come back, and then 58 seconds after that, Abby Ness would score a goal on the power play. All of a sudden, you guys are tied 1-1 early in the second. Ness fires a shot. That one, a great save by Shaw. Rebound out in front. She scores! Abby Ness with the goal. And St. Cloud State has tied this one up. Did it have the feeling like, here we go again in game two as it did in game one? Well, we obviously answering right back was a big, big plus for us. I mean, it was just an unfortunate thing. I think for the the whole of the game, our special teams was was the difference in the game. We gave up two shorthanded and two power play goals, and you can't do that in this league because uh, you know you, there's you're going to get chances on the power play, and you're going to get chances to kill. You got to be you got to keep that even. And you know, 0. 0.7 seconds left on the clock when uh, Carvin and scores that was a kind of a backbreaker, but. Obviously, we came back with some resolve and, and got that power play goal right away to tie it back up. The turnovers, how do you clean those up? Is that just of a lack of attention to detail on the shorthanded goals? What was going on defensively? Well, we're trying our power play. We're pressing a little bit harder and, and trying to make something happen, and, and that's what's going to happen. You're going to turn the puck over, and unfortunately, we just got to take care of it better and, and uh, keep working on our on our power play. Overall impressions of the the series versus UND? Tale of two two teams. I think I think Friday was uh, was a great performance, and and I think that kind of shows what kind of team we can be. And I think Saturday is if we don't bring it all, um, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, you know, a couple bad goals, a couple special teams goals, and, and uh, you know, we're behind. And so um, if we can play like we play on Friday, we're going to win a lot of hockey games here down down the rest of the season. What is it about Fridays where your team plays so, so well against, uh, you've had four matches, every one of those teams have been in the top ten or have votes in the top ten. You guys play well on Fridays, and then why is there the letdown on Saturdays? Probably if I knew that, we wouldn't be talking about it because, uh, you know, there's not much change in the coaching staff or what we how we prepare. I mean, I think it's a little bit of a mental. They build up all week, and they're ready to go. I think part of it is we got to have some resolve and come back with that with a little bit of work and dig a little deeper. Obviously, Saturday, you're a little bit sore, a little bit tired, 
and you got to get through that, I think. So just getting through that mentally for our players is, is a big thing. Once again this weekend, as you did, I believe, versus Ohio State, would go with Julie Friend back-to-back days. And again, just like your team, it just wasn't in the cards for, for Julie again on a Saturday. You may be looking at maybe switching things up as, as you go along here and maybe doing a, a goalie rotation because it doesn't seem like Saturdays favor her too much. <laughs> Hasn't anything, but we haven't given her a lot of help on those Saturdays either. So, uh, I mean, I, that's all part of it. And it's just like our other players. We kind of always evaluate on Friday and see where we're at going into Saturday. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the player segment. This is the Jeff Geeson Show. Hello, this is junior goaltender Julie Friend from the St. Cloud State Women's Hockey Team. This is the Jeff Geeson Show on KBSC. There's another tweet on KVSC's Husky Hockey Twitter page. 88.1 FM has always been your home for Husky Hockey. Who need the latest news about the St. Cloud State Hockey Team? Follow us on Twitter. Twitter.com backslash KVSC Hockey is the address, and you can find starting lineups, score updates, reports from practice, and so much more. KVSC is tweeting away with the Husky Hockey Twitter. So log on today and follow us at Twitter.com backslash KVSC Hockey. Hello, this is Junior Center Abby Ness from St. Cloud State Women's Hockey Team. This is Jeff Geeson Show on KVSC. And welcome back to the Jeff Geeson Show. It's now the time for our player segment. We're joined by junior forward number 10, Abby Ness, and along with junior goaltender number one, Julie Friend. And first things first, we'll talk with Julie Friend. And Julie, so far this season, the first four weekends of the season for you guys, you've been close in a couple of those, but you guys have had a really tough schedule. I mean, looking at every game that you guys have played, you guys started off with Quinnipiac. They had a few votes to be in the top 10. They could be anywhere between 12 and 15. And then you guys had to take on Ohio State, who was ranked in the top 10. Then you had Wisconsin, who was like number four. And then you had the University of North Dakota, who was like six. So in all four of your matchups on the season, they've been teams that have been ranked in the top ten, or at least getting votes. And you guys have, for all intents and purposes, been pretty close. you got two ties in there. You guys have been pretty close, at least on your Friday games, you guys are close. And you're a big part of that. Talk a little bit about your play and a little bit about uh, maybe the frustration that you're feeling and the team's feeling by having such an early, tough schedule. Well, like you said, as far as uh, coming up with a word to describe uh, the season so far, I would either say hard or close. Uh, hard in the sense that, you know, we're playing a lot of top 10 teams, but close in the sense that we're only losing 2-1. to one. You know, we're tying Quinnipiac 0-0. So, you know, there's uh, definitely we're happy about that. You know, we're happy that we're getting in close games, but, you know, now we we got to get past that happy part and really – get to start winning some games and you know uh you know this year it's been it's been good for me the the defense is really allowing me to see shots you know that's a huge it's not just me playing well it's literally because of the defense playing blocking shots in front of me and even the forwards you know on the penalty kill especially on Friday night like Callie Funk and Amanda Monkman there's a time on the penalty kill where both of them probably blocked about two or three shots a piece you know that's huge for our team you know if they can't, if the other teams can't get shots through, you know, especially on the power play, I mean, that's going to be huge uh, success for us down the road. What is it about Fridays with this team? You guys really seem to play a lot better on Fridays than you do on Saturdays. I don't know. I mean, it might just be a mental thing, or maybe we're just catching teams off guard on Friday and we're not playing the same way on Saturday. I don't know. It might be a mental thing, but I mean, I don't think it's a lot to look into. I think that we we can play. Friday night's game on Saturday night, and I think that's what we're going to focus on heading into the rest of the season. Put you on the spot a little bit here. What is it about you, Julie Friend, in Saturdays? I think it's teams capitalizing a lot on, you know, tip screens and uh, rebounds, you know, that they're not on Friday night. I don't think it's necessarily, you know, the team or me doing something wrong. I think it's just, you know, the teams are capitalizing on their good scoring chances. Are you comfortable when you when you – start Friday and then come back on Saturday are you okay with with doing that yeah absolutely you know uh, you know as a goaltender you got to be ready to play you know Friday Saturday or both games and you know I just try to give my team a chance to win every night that I'm in the net and that's what I'm gonna try to do the rest of the season do you know when you're going to be net obviously it's always going to be every Friday when do you know that you get the Saturday start or if Katie will is that after Friday or do you go into the weekend knowing where you guys are going to be stacked? Oh, you know, it's after Friday. We have a team meeting, usually on Saturday, go over film, and coach announces a starting lineup, so that's when we find out. 
What is one of the most difficult aspects of being a goaltender? Probably just staying mentally tough the whole game. I mean, you can't like get too excited on the ups, and then you can't get too down on yourself on all the downs. You kind of have to stay at a good mental level throughout the whole game. How difficult is it to have that uh, that mind to be as strong as you possibly can get it? Because allowing a goal and, and trying not to remember that and, and then having the frustration of trying to score goals and knowing that you're kind of the last defense, it's, it does it weigh on you after a while? Uh, you know, I try not, not to let it. Uh, like I said, throughout the whole game, you kind of have to have the same mindset. and. You can't let one goal get to you. A big thing about goaltenders is we have to have a short memory because if you let one goal get to you, you're going to start letting in four, five, six, you know, maybe double digits. So, you know, you make a big save, you can't think too much about it. And same thing with a goal, you let in a bad goal or a good goal. You just have to keep playing like you were from the start when it was 0-0. Last week, head coach Jeff Geeson said that he feels that you are one of the best goaltenders in, in the whole country. When you're on, you're, you're as good as anybody else. And looking at uh, your stats so far through the – the first six starts that you had, 2.96 goals allowed average, a percentage on the save of, of, of just over 90, 92%. So you're doing your part. How difficult uh, you know, is it to face anywhere between 40 and 50 shots a night sometimes and to make those saves? It's, it's tough a lot of the times. But at the same time, you know, I know my role, and everybody else on this team knows their role and what they have to do. And my role, and same with Katie, is to give our team a chance to win night in and night out, whether that's seeing 20 shots a game or 56 like I saw in Wisconsin. you know, My goal is to give my team a chance to win, and that's what I'm going to have to do the rest of the season. What are the expectations for this team when you guys go to Duluth to take on the Bulldogs? You know, We have nothing to lose. You know, We need to come out of there with a win or two, and that's the biggest thing right now for us is trying to get points any way we can. You know, We got uh, two points in Ohio. That's huge for us, and you know, every weekend we need to – have the mindset of we need to get points every weekend. How do you get in the mindset to be a goaltender and to ignore the goals? I mean, it's got to be one of the most difficult positions in all of sports to play is to be a goaltender. So do you go through a, a thought process or any training to, to build a thick skin to, to not let those eat you alive? Part of that thing is just uh, going out there and having fun, you know. That's one of the biggest things for me as a goaltender is when I let in a goal, you know, I got to just remember that this is a game and this is, you know, I'm playing the game because I love it and I'm having fun doing it. And, you know, when you have that mindset, that is the reason why players are playing at their best is because they're having fun. You ask any Olympian out there, guy or woman, all they're doing is going out there and having fun. And I think that's a big thing, you know, for our team to move forward is we need to just start having a lot of fun. How did you become a goaltender? Was there anything, any other position you tried when you were younger before you donned the pads? Oh uh, yeah, you know, I was a forward for a little while and then my parents got, had uh, season tickets to the Wild right when they started in the expansion year in 2000 and I started to go to the games with them and started watching the goaltenders and something about it, I just uh, started picking that up. Do you ever have any aspirations to maybe skate the forward position every once in a while? Do you get to do that in practice or would you like to do it in a game sometime? Oh, uh, you know, I wish, you know, there's some days where I wish I could put that game-winning goal in, but uh, you know, I love being able to rob somebody of the game-winning goal. So I think that, in the end, that kind of made my decision to be a goalie is, as much as it, it, as fun as it is to, you know, get that game winner as a forward. Uh, it's pretty cool stopping that uh, game winner like on a breakaway or something. Well, you've been phenomenal. Keep up the great work. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Julie. Julie Friend, junior goaltender for the St. Cloud State Huskies, will now pass the microphone over to another junior, junior forward number ten, Abby Ness, and Abby a goal this past weekend versus UND. Talk a little bit. First things first, you're number 10 this year. I am, yeah. What's with the number change? Um, I was 10 in high school, and um, just coming here, I just kind of randomly picked a number. Just like as a freshman, there um, weren't like too many options, so I just went with the number 19 my first two years. And, um, uh, yeah, I just decided to switch it up this year, and um, hopefully it'll do a little bit more for me this year. And, um, yeah, it's just my favorite number, so I decided to switch it up. Well, it looks like it's uh, working for you so far. You've got two goals on the season in the first uh, few series on the year. Take a look at uh, what you've done. You've also gotten a lot of shots on goal so far. Looking at the Quinnipiac series, you had nine. Ohio State, you score, You had uh, 11 shots on goal. One of those was an assist as well as a goal in that series. And you uh, kind of cooled down in Wisconsin, only four shots on goal, but you amped back up to uh, another eight versus North Dakota. So talk a little bit about uh, the opportunities that you're getting and also the uh, the chances of, of getting the puck between the pipes. 
Yeah, um, I've just been really trying to focus this year on getting it to the net and um, hopefully just like stopping for the net, getting there for rebounds. Um, I think it's huge to get a lot of shots. Um, I actually switched. I usually play center, but this year they had me at wing, and I think I've been getting a lot more opportunities at wing actually and taking it wide and driving to the net. And um, yeah, I just have been really trying to focus on getting the net and hopefully I can just um, trying to keep finding the back of the net and um, just going from there. So. What are some of the things, uh, working on the lines and working to get the puck on the net, what are you guys doing in practice? What are some of the different things the coach is, is trying to do to help you guys get more shots on goal and more shots between the pipes? Yeah, especially um, in the last two weeks, we've been doing a lot of shooting drills, just um, different stuff like that, uh, making sure that we stop in, fr like in front of the net and um, just like all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, we've been really working on that and drills and they want us to make sure that we're always shooting as hard as we can and um, really bearing down on that and not just not just flicking it to the net, you know, like we really want to make sure we shoot as hard as we can and, um, yeah, and just stuff like that in practice. So, How difficult mentally has the, the opening four series of the season been? We talked with Julie about uh, everybody you guys have faced have been ranked or getting votes in the top ten. How difficult is it, yet what are you learning from those teams? You can definitely learn a lot. I know um, we're. I don't think we're like too far from a lot of those teams either. I I think we're like right there with them. It is hard playing, like you said, some of the teams in the top ten. But I know like even last weekend. I know Friday. You know we lost UND two to one. We're only like a goal away. So it's just kind of difficult like looking at it that way. I guess in the sense like that we're right there and we we do want to get points and that's really important. But yeah, you can definitely um, just learn a lot and like. Um, just like competing against those teams. Is there a feeling offensively that maybe you guys are, are a little snake bit? I mean, looking at some of these games, watching you guys, following you guys, you have opportunities when you're when you're right there, and maybe it's a pass, and the puck somehow decides to bounce over a, a blade or something like that, or you're in position and there's a pass and someone's turned around the wrong way. It always seems like there's an opportunity to, to maybe tie it or bang it home, or make that statement. And you guys are, are just yeah, that, just you know, just away. just off the mark. Yeah, yeah. I think we're, you know, like you said, we're just right there. Um, I think we just really need to capitalize on our chances. That's that's huge, because um, obviously, like at the Division One, you don't get like as many chances as you did in high school and all that. So that's definitely a huge thing. We just really need to bear down and um, put our chances away that we do get. So. But you guys are starting to break free. You've had some good yeah. rushes, some short-handed opportunities. You guys uh, are are there and ha having the opportunities. It just Maybe it's a, it's a comfort with who's on your line and getting that goaltender to, to shift left and right rather than just uh, having her stand right between the pipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We just you know, we need to make sure that we just bear down and, um, like I said, just capitalize on chances. And uh, there's obviously like this the goaltending through this whole league is going to be really tough, and um, you just got to bear down. That's what it comes down to. So. Speaking with Abby Ness, second on the team in points. She has two assists on the season and two goals. Just had one last week in versus the U University of North Dakota. That came early on in the second. That tied the score 1-1. How good of a feeling was that for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, that was really good. We were hoping that we could um, keep the momentum going from that. So, um, yeah, that was, that was tough. <laughs> so how did you become a hockey player? You are you are tiny, but you are fast. Uh, you know, in taking some of the – the hits that the WCHA has to dish out. What are some things that you do to, to prepare yourself to uh, to take on the onslaught? Yeah, you know, I just try to beat him with speed is the main thing because obviously I'm smaller. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the main thing, I guess. It's, sometimes it's tough, but you just got to, like, be strong, as strong as you can, strong on your skates, and, um, yeah, just kind of push through there, and sometimes it gets to be a little rough, but you just kind of got to break through and... Well, you do a great job. I'm just amazed watching you. I enjoy watching you, and good luck this weekend versus the University of Duluth. What do you know about the Bulldogs, and what's your guys' plan of attack versus them this weekend? Um, yeah, I think it's going to be another tough weekend. You know, I, are they a top ten team? I guess I'm, I believe close, they are. Yeah. yeah, I know they're pretty close. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be another tough weekend for us, but we just got to make sure we capitalize on our chances. Like I said, you know, shoot to score, and um, you know, our goaltending's been great, so um, hopefully we can come out with a couple wins, get some points here. So. Well, hopefully you get another goal. On on Saturday, <laughs> you were my pick to click, and you came through, so so thank you <laughs> awesome. for that. I'm now leading the, the standings <laughs> in that. Thanks, Abby. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Abby Ness, member of the St. Cloud State women's hockey team. They're taking on UMD up in Duluth this weekend. We'll break. We'll come back with head coach Jeff Geese. We'll preview that series right after this.
Don't miss B Rook and the Kamish from 4 to 6 on the KVSC Sports Stream, where they aren't afraid to tell it like it is. It's his fault because he wasn't able to. He's not shooting the baskets. He's not shooting he, the baskets. He's not passing the basketball. But he's drawing up the he's plays. He's not blocking in the lane he's or taking charges. He's making the substitutions. I mean, he's making the calls of. Right. Okay, well, the gonna... players still have to perform. Gary, your zipper's open. <laughs> That's it. Got him. B Rook and the Kamish on the KVSC Sports Stream, endorsed by the Falcon. <laughs> Hello, this is senior forward Amy Olson from the St. Cloud State women's hockey team. This is the Jeff Geeson Show on KVSC. And welcome back to the Jeff Geeson Show. We'll now take a look at the Bulldogs of UMD. And what do you know about this team? And, and first of all, you know, your team has been playing pretty well here as of late. You've had probably one of the most toughest schedules to start out a season than anybody in the nation right now. Yeah, I told our players the other day. I mean, we we have not played anybody that's not been in the top ten um, to start the year. Quinnipiac obviously wasn't in there at the preseason, but they, uh, they're they in there now, and I think they were ninth in the latest poll. So, no, we've had a tough schedule, but that's just going to make us, uh, you know, better down the stretch. I think uh, we are keep getting better, and... And uh, we've showed some signs of improvement, and that's what we're looking for. You guys are there. You know, we talked about uh, in the in the opening segment your Friday nights. I talked with the girls about Friday. You guys, every, every Friday is the day you guys are, are going to play your toughest, at least in the first four series. What do you know about uh, the University of Minnesota Duluth that did not uh, turn out uh, very pleasurable for you a year ago, losing twice? Four to one. Those were here at home, and then on the road, eight two and three one. So it's not going to be very easy going up to the uh, um, up to the big lake up there. No, it's never easy. I mean, Duluth's all, Duluth's uh, a, a very good team. They've always been very good. They you know they uh, they're very well coached. They uh, they come at you with some waves. They got some skilled players that can make some things happen. And I think that's been the surprising thing with Duluth is they've been putting up some goals. So uh, we're going to have to be great on defense and great get some good goaltending and, and keep ourselves in there. When you guys are going through practice and trying to generate goals, what are some of the things or formations or, or what, what are some of the, the concoctions that you and the Fetters are trying to put in place to, to help these girls uh, get more in the net? Well, I think we got to shoot the puck more. I mean, you shoot the puck and good things are going to happen. And then and then it's just paying attention to the little details, stopping in front of the net, uh, you know, making sure you're following up for rebounds, all those kind of little things come into it until we, until we get going. Is there anything that you can do as a coach that's a little gutsy? I know football, they, uh, you can go for it on fourth down. Baseball, you can do a suicide squeeze. Is there anything as far as the, the game of hockey goes where maybe you can do something to give your, your team a bit of a jolt other than pulling the goaltender? You know, not really. I mean, it's just, you know, trying to keep possession of the puck and stay on offense as much as you can. Uh, you know, sometimes I think our team works so hard on defense, then we get it, and then we want to get rid of it and get off instead of, uh, you know, having a little bit of poise with the puck. So I think just puck possession is going to be a big thing and, and keeping pressure on them. Looking at that right now, it looks like I, I think uh, on the faceoffs, your team does a, a pretty decent job in winning faceoffs, and that in turn allows you guys to, to control the puck and, and set things up. Your overall impressions of, of where you guys are on faceoffs and controlling the puck? Well, we're getting better. I think uh, early in the year, I don't think we were very good at all. I think we're getting better, but it's something that uh, you know, as a center, you got to take some pride in that and put a little bit of you know emphasis on it. And I think sometimes we just go in there and think, all right, here it goes. I mean, like you said, it's a 50-50 chance to get possession of the puck. We need to we need to win more than we lose. But I think we're getting better at it, and and it's been more of a a point of emphasis with our centers to take a little more pride in that. How do you go about cleaning up some of the turnovers that have happened in your defensive zone? Oh, well, we just got you just got to value the puck. I mean, we can't be in such a hurry to get things uh, get things going the other way. And sometimes holding on to it's better than just dumping it away. Do you feel that that happens sometimes where they're trying to rush it? I know some covering some of these games, the you know your players will bring it out right next to the net or right in front of your goaltender, and they'll have their pocket picked. And you know, there's a point blank shot there. Is there something different to maybe? outlet pass or, or clear well they got to have I mean they're they're reading the play and what's open to them and what's options they have I mean I'm not it's not football we don't diagram every uh, place coming out from behind the net so they have to read and obviously they just make better decisions and and see what's open to them coach thanks for the time good luck this weekend and uh, thanks for being a part of the show once again hopefully you guys will come uh, home with from Duluth with a few more points yeah thanks a lot he's Jeff Geeson the head coach of the St. Cloud State women's hockey team this has been the Jeff Geeson show on KBS.